In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the six phases that people go through when they are trying to stop drinking. If we can discuss each of the phases in detail separately, then what it can help you do is see what's going to happen to you on your journey. You can start to see the next logical step to that absolute freedom when you're in 100% control. So it really doesn't make a difference if you've already made the decision to stop drinking or if you're still considering it. There's going to be something for you in this video. And very quickly guys, just before we start talking about those six phases, if you want to get access to the brand new video training showing you how to get 100% control of drinking alcohol using something called first principles thinking, then make sure to click the link in the description. You'll get instant access to that training. And in that video, I'm going to be talking to you about how I discovered first principles thinking. I'll be talking to you about the five mistakes that 95% of drinkers make, as well as the two phases of becoming sober clear. So make sure to check that video out after watching this one. So it took me about 10 years to find a solution to my drinking problem. And I have gone through every single one of these phases. So when I talk about these phases, I've not just made them up out of thin air, right? I've done this. This is what I've been through. This has been my journey. And now that I'm free, I want to share what happened and, and the path that most people are going to go through as well. Because if you've not stopped drinking yet, there is light at the end of the tunnel. That change is still possible for you. If it, it takes most people a long time to build that paradigm, to realize that alcohol does nothing for them. And if you're on that journey right now, this video, you are going to love it. So just stay tuned. So it all really starts before we take our first drink. So we need to talk about the pre-drinking phase first. Now, if you think about the typical teenager that's growing up in the world, they're trying to understand how the hell this world works because it's extremely complex. And alcohol is a huge part of the society that we live in. So we're growing up and we're trying to figure out what the hell this stuff is. And because of the way that our society views alcohol, because of the paradigm, because of the collective belief that society holds around alcohol, then typically we're going to buy into that same belief as well. People talk about alcohol as this good thing that is fun and it's about having a good time and it helps you relax and all of this stuff. And we start to develop this worldview where we see alcohol as a beneficial thing. So we're getting all of this information that alcohol is a good thing. Then, for example, we come home one day and our father, our mother, our auntie, our uncle, our brother, our sister, they also come home and they've been working all day and they're tired. They're, 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 you know, they're, they're exhausted and they feel a bit agitated and they're a bit moody. And then they open up a can of beer or pour a glass of wine. And all of a sudden, they're a bit more talkative. They look a bit more relaxed. They're just not as agitated. And we look at the alcohol and we look at our, our colleague or a friend or our, our family member or whatever it is, and we think, huh, interesting. So they drink this drink and they look really chilled out. So we've got the collective belief, but then we're also getting evidence. We're getting evidence that, oh, well, there must be something good about this. And then we turn on the TV, right? We turn on the TV and then there's Mr. Man in the sports car with the, with the whiskey at the end of it and the cigar. Or we've got the beautiful, sophisticated lady in the dress. Or the macho man that's drinking the beer with the, with the sports team. We've got all of these marketing messages that are going into our brain as well. And for a lot of people, they don't start developing a drinking problem in their teens, right? I did. It was like, as a teenager, I was already off the rails, right? But a lot of people don't. A lot of people kind of, they, they see this stuff happening and they think alcohol is a good thing, but they don't really develop a problem until maybe their 30s or even their 40s. They don't realize, well, this is sucks later on in life. But at the end of the day, if we really knew the truth about alcohol, nobody would drink. If alcohol was just put onto this planet today, there would be not a soul in the world that would ever drink it because it really does nothing for you. So that's the first phase, right? It's all about the paradigm that we're developing before we even take our first drink. The next phase is all about the light drinking phase. So if the conditioning has happened successfully, we get to a point where we're going to start drinking because why wouldn't we, right? If we actually believe that alcohol is a good thing, why wouldn't we do it? If we think that going to the gym is a good thing, why wouldn't we do that as well? If we think being vegan or eating lots of protein is a good thing, then we'll probably do that as well. But we're trying to figure out the pieces and put them together and alcohol is definitely a good thing because that's what I've been taught. That's what I've been led to believe. So naturally you take your first drink. And now this is a phase that some people will spend a very long time in. There's plenty of people that just stay light drinkers forever. That doesn't mean that alcohol is actually a good thing. That doesn't mean that it's a beneficial thing. They just don't progress to the next phases, right? I've gone through all the phases. I, I progress pretty quickly through every single phase. But at the end of the day, we go through this period of light drinking. And that's like where we have one or two drinks. We might get a little bit drunk here and there, a bit tipsy, a bit foolish, but nothing bad happens. There are essentially no consequences during this time. 
The real problem is that we actually believe that we're getting something from drinking, so we never really want to stop it. So whilst it's causing no problems, we have no desire to get rid of it. Now, one of the problems during this phase of being a light drinker is the way that society then gives you this validation. Now, if you're a teenager in your early 20s and you go to a party and you get drunk, it's not necessarily that your status goes down. And that can happen in your 20s as well, you know, and maybe at a work gathering and you get smashed and everybody goes crazy and breaks a glass and, you know, people then start to validate this behavior. They start to think that it's good. They start to encourage it. Go on, lad, have another, down another, blah, blah, blah. And that kind of feels good. Who doesn't want to be validated by their friends and the people around them? If you're getting this encouragement and this, oh, go on, you, oh, yeah, 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 all of that stuff. Well, not only do you see alcohol as a good thing, but the people around you are also kind of giving you a bit of respect that you might not have had before. And you really do believe that alcohol enhances the occasion during this phase, which leads us on to the third phase. Now, the third phase is you've left the light drinking phase. It's gone to the next phase. You've developed a drinking problem. You've become a quote unquote problem drinker. And that's basically what it says on the tin. Drinking is causing problems. That might mean that the hangovers are starting to get bad. That might mean that your insides are hurting a little bit. You know, you're getting a few health scares. For me, it was, I threw up blood on a MacBook Pro and you know, that's when I realized I really do have a damn big problem here. It might be that you're Family are just losing respect for you. Your kids have smelt the alcohol on your breath. You're not going to the gym. You're not showing up in your career the same way that you were a few years ago. Drinking is causing problems. You've left the light drinking phase. It's more of a regular thing now. It might be a daily thing or it might be, you know, these big binging episodes. And the drinking is doing a bit of damage. And really, people aren't so sure why it's happening. They don't, they never envisioned themselves doing this. When they were in their, you know, maybe in their early 30s, they were drinking a few drinks and getting drunk a little bit. It wasn't causing any problems, but then 10 years down the line, it's causing problems. And that individual is thinking, I didn't sign up for this. This wasn't my intention. I did not want to do this. I just wanted to keep it like it was before. But the natural progression of any drug is you drink one and you drink another and another and another and another, right? And despite what people are gonna tell you about how this is a problem with your personality, it is not. It's a problem with the drug. The natural progression of any drug is that you will drink more of it, the same way that a cocaine addict is gonna take more cocaine over time. And they don't know why it's happening, but I'm telling you why it's happening. It's because it's a drug, it's an addictive drug. But it gets to a point where they know it's causing problems, but they still kind of sit in this phase for a little bit of time. They know it's causing problems, but they're not looking for solutions. So for example, they might be in a position where they're problem drinking and they may see one of my YouTube videos, they might watch it, they might go, oh yeah, that makes sense, but they never watch another one. It's not like they've gone into the problem aware phase, which is the next phase that we'll get to next. They're just kind of in this state of mind where they know it's causing problems, they know it's bullshit, but you know, oh, well, maybe we can just hold on to it for a little bit longer. That moves us into the fourth phase, which is where you start looking for solutions. You start actively seeking solutions to your problem. And that may mean that you start looking at rehabs. You might start reading books. You might start talking to friends and family. You might end up going to Alcoholics Anonymous or some 12 step system. You are starting to look for a solution to the problem. You've gone past the phase of not caring anymore. Now you've really realized that this is complete bullshit and you need to change. And a lot of you guys that are watching these videos, you're in that phase right now. You're looking for a solution. You're still trying to put the pieces together. You're still figuring out, am I an alcoholic? Should I use willpower? I can just resist it. Should I do it alone? Should I get a coach? Should I work in a program? What should I do? You're in a phase now where it's like, right, I need to find a solution to the problem. Now, different things are gonna work well for different people. I've told you guys that my mum has been to AA for 20 years, it worked for her. Didn't work for me, doesn't work for everybody. Doesn't mean that there's a right or wrong way. It just means that you're in a phase where you're willing to try things out. You'd be open to pretty much anything during this phase. It's like, whoa, you, you know a different way to stop drinking. Okay, I'm in, let me try it, let me try it. I, I really wanna stop this. But for some reason, you can't stop it. You want to, but you can't. And I'm telling you, the only reason why people can't stop drinking is because they're afraid. They're afraid that their life just won't quite look the same again when they remove the alcohol. And I mean, I talk about this in depth in the Sober Clear program, but essentially you've got nothing to fear, right? Because there's really nothing to give up. Alcohol never did anything for you in the first place. And it's, there is nothing to give up, but that's a whole topic for a completely separate video. And during this phase of looking for a solution, it's likely that some people get some levels of success. They might get a stretch of a few years or a few months or a few weeks without drinking. And they start to see the benefits of being a non-drinker. But what happens in this phase is that if they don't move to the next phase, they stay here. They keep trying things, they don't really commit, they don't go all in, 
They try, they get a few days here, a few weeks there, a few months there, but they're not really all in. So it's kind of sad, but people can spend a lot of time in this phase. And I spent a lot of time in this phase because I was aware of the problem very early on. I went to AA when I was in my early 20s and I kind of stayed in this, you know, I, I was aware of the problem. I had like dipping pieces of success, 30 days here, a month here, a year here, but I wasn't like all in, right? It was just kind of like testing the waters, trying things, not really committing, which leads us into the fifth phase, which is you've found a solution that works for you. And like I said, for my mom, that was AA. She's been for 20 years. She found something that works for her and she just continued that and her life has gone really well. She's got the house. She's got the, the, the husband. She's got the, and a son. She's got my brother. She's got me. Well, she had me when she was drinking, but you know, she rebuilt this new life for herself. And that was her solution. Other people are gonna do a stint in rehab and come out and never drink again. Other people are probably gonna find it in things like religion. Some people are gonna have read a book and things just clicked and they never drank again. Other people are gonna have joined a program and never drank again, right? And in this fifth phase, you've really found a solution to the problem. And this is a very exciting phase, right? Who doesn't want to get to this phase where they found a solution to their problem? Now, the, there have been periods in my life where I thought that I'd advanced to this phase. I, I thought I'd got to this stage where I'd found a solution. Like I used willpower for like nine months, stopped drinking, all good. And I really thought that I'd cracked it, but there was a day where the willpower ran out and I ended up drinking again. So it took me back to the four phase. And whilst a lot of people get to the fifth phase and stay there forever, some people need to get to the sixth phase. And the sixth phase is all about being sober clear. It means you have this 100% clarity that you see alcohol exactly for what it is. And it's what I help people do in my program. And it's also what I help people do on the YouTube channel. I mean, I've got people that have messaged me that they've watched every single one of my YouTube videos and they are done. They have finished drinking. And essentially being sober clear is where you have this paradigm in this worldview where you see alcohol for what it is and you just don't want to drink anymore. It's not like you have to try anymore. It's not a constant battle anymore. You're just done, it's finished and you move on with your life. So what you essentially do when you're sober clear is you completely reframe the way that you view alcohol. You build a new paradigm and then you go towards a better quality of life, right? You go all in with your personal life. You're 100% committed to just making humongous changes. And that's the only thing that worked for me. It was this logical approach to reframing the way I viewed alcohol and then just having this relentless focus, this consistency in my personal life, in my relationship, in my business, in my health, in traveling, in everything. It was just like, I'm all in to really reaching a potential. And those, that combination is just damn exciting. And if you want my help getting sober clear, then make sure to click the link in the description. There's a short video to watch. You'll be able to book a call to see if the sober clear method may be good for you. And if you click the videos on the screen now, you can learn a little bit more about becoming sober clear, as well as the one thing that got me to stop drinking forever. Thanks a lot.